All right, what's up guys? So today let's talk about the Acro and let's talk about my experience over the past uh, year and couple months. So uh, one of the things that you, you may not know about me is I really like Aimpoint. And if you do know, you've probably seen them. So I have a lot of aim points. I really like their, their micro series. Uh, they're light, freaking strong. They have great battery lives. So when Aimpoint came out with the Acro, I was pretty dang stoked. I was um, like a little kid in a candy shop. I was excited to see it. I was excited to play with it. I was excited to get one. And um, <clears throat> luckily Aimpoint, and, and this is for you guys to know, right? Not hide anything. Aimpoint sent me this, right? I was, I was really stoked to get one and be one of the first people to receive one with like Don Edwards and uh, Jared Reston and I believe even uh, Bill Blowers. So receiving an Aimpoint Acro uh, from Aimpoint was cool. It was, it was a nice honor um, to, to receive one and I was stoked to play with it. So let's talk about what over the course of the, the last year and some months, how my experience has been. So let's start out with damage, right? What kind of damage have I done to my acro or what has been damaged over the course of the last year? And really there's not a lot. It's a lot of cosmetic scratches, dents here and there, uh, little chips and stuff, and I'll try and get some close-ups of it, but really nothing, nothing too serious around the entire thing. Um, I haven't broken any lenses, but I've also not been super abusive with it. What I've done is just my normal use of a gun or an optic based gun. So with this agency arms gun, it's been on two different slides so far uh, on a 19 and a 17, kind of like half and half almost. And the reason for that is because I wanted to try it on both. Also, uh, agency arms, uh, agency arms makes a uh, AOS plate for it. So I was testing that for a little bit as well. And their AOS system is pretty awesome. You can literally swap optics uh, with just using a different plate. And not only that, but It'll, it'll let you put the Acro on a handgun, whether you want irons forward or irons rear, which is something I haven't seen with a lot of different companies. So uh, you get the option when it comes to that and you can change it anytime. You just have to take the Acro off, swap the sight over and put the Acro back on. So any other damage that's really happened uh, because there's no lens damage, there's no scratches on it, um, which is surprising the way that I travel and stuff. But uh, other than the damage on the outside coating uh, is the battery cap. So uh, as you guys know, the battery life on this thing is a little less than most by far. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and the battery cap gets some use, gets some serious use. And because of its shape and because of whatever they made it out of, it tends to bend, scratch, and, and kind of almost... I would say it gets damaged pretty easily. I'll try and get some close-ups to that. So it's not something that can't be replaced because it's just a battery cap. So you just have to call them, but it is something that damages really easy based off of the use of the actual optic. Also, I've seen people that, that don't get batteries uh, or don't tighten it enough and then they don't get their full battery life or they don't get good battery activation because the battery's rattling around in there, not getting its all, con all its connections because they didn't close it all the way. So be sure that if you're using this and you're using the Acro, make sure you close up the battery all the way. Now, our battery cap. Let's talk about the mount. The mounting system is pretty simple. It looks like a mini Picatinny mount <laughs> That's a, or, or like a dovetail style mount in general. It is, uh, it is very simple, and what's kind of cool is that when you tighten it down, it cinches the optic upward a little bit, depending on who made your mount. So if the mounting system isn't fully, uh, like I guess, properly made, they may make it so that it cinches upward and your optic sits much higher than the actual slide. The AOS mount for the Acro is pretty good. It's very sturdy, it doesn't give a lot of leeway when it comes to moving back and forth or anything like that. There's very little gaps in it. And not only that, but it cinches in super nice to the point where I haven't had to use any Loctite on the screw. So I'm not sure if that's something that everybody can get away with or not. Kind of something that you'll have to play with. But I have not like Loctited this screw in any way or used any Vibratite or anything like that. It is just with a little bit of hand tightness uh, with the Torx uh, screwdriver that I have. So nothing too crazy and 
it works really well. It's it's just quick, it's easy. It's nothing that you have to like put in these screws and you don't have to torque it and all this stuff. But there may be a torque spec that I don't know about, but whatever, I haven't had to use it. Um, the, the cool part about it too is that because of the way that it mounts, uh, it doesn't need screws to come in through the bottom or anything like that. So a lot of the slide milling and a lot of the slide plates that are out there, uh, it's really simple to put on to any any gun or any any slide that you have. You just cinch it on there, you can take it off, you put on another one, and it's very quick and easy. So I like it. I like its sim simplicity of that being just one little nugget. Um, it does stick out just a tad bit, but it isn't something that's that serious and it doesn't stick out past the actual uh, optics width. So you're not you're not going into what would be like an over amount of, uh, of, of width when it comes to that little screw nut. Going further into it, let's talk about the size and weight of this thing. The size and weight of the Acro is actually pretty nice. Um, a lot of guys, like they look at it and they're like, what the hell, it looks like a mailbox, bro. And uh, who cares, <laughs> who gives a shit? So the, the mailbox look of it is not a big deal. It's a closed emitter optic. So it gives you something that a lot of them aren't doing and a lot of optics out there aren't doing for you. It is one of the biggest reasons why I was excited about it was because it is closed emitter, it's not exposed to the elements as easily and the lenses are easily wipe awayable or I can just wipe off any water uh, because it's somewhat flat and there is a little bit of a divot into the, the glass here right it does pool some water but it's not that bad and once you draw the gun it literally wipes away also you could use an anti-fog or a rain x type of uh type of um uh coating on there which will keep the water from bubbling or staying on there in general uh so that's always easy right it works just like a regular lens uh care for it does matter now go going into it a little bit further right the size of it and the weight of it on a slide whether it's a 19 or 17 because that's what i tested it on was really nice right the the slide movement the reciprocation of it because of its little bit of extra weight from an rmr it is actually gives me a really good cycle rate right so so the cycling of the gun when in recoil and it it re uh, reciprocates is actually really nice and and smooth it's not weird it doesn't jam back it doesn't jam forward it's not some weird freaking shit uh, but it is different from the rmr so be aware that it is going to feel different, but it's not that big of a deal and it's kind of nice. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really digging it. The size of it for concealment isn't that big of a deal either. It's no bigger uh, in, in reality from an RMR, maybe a little bit taller, but that's it. So you're not, you're not living with a, with a ginormous optic on your gun. And as you can see on a 17, it, it really isn't that big. Going further into it, let's talk about the settings. So the settings are on its left side, right? Or, or for a righty against your body. Um, I haven't inadvertently bumped them because they're kind of recessed to an extent. So I've been happy with that, but they have 10 settings and the, the 10 settings are pretty nice. The first three are night vision settings and they work really well. They do what they're supposed to do. They're good, crisp, clean dots under night vision. I'm very happy with them personally. Um, they're not one of those things that cause any kind of photocathode oversaturation, or I'm sorry, micro channel plate oversaturation uh, to your night vision, and they do a really good job of sticking there. Now, if you need a little bit more brightness because you're using an illuminator and IR, you can do that. You can brighten it up and it's still not too bad. It, it gives you a really nice crisp dot. I'm very happy with the way that it works in night vision settings, um, and because they're specific too. Uh, during the daytime, my settings are usually around eight or seven, right? That's my normal carry setting because it's bright enough for daylight. So my dot doesn't get washed out by daylight and I can see it under sunglasses pretty easily. And because I like to use a white light on most of my guns, if not all of them, and I don't want it to be washed out if I have to use my white light. So I'm a big fan of keeping my, my dots a little bit bright on that end and I'll check it, right? It's a good thing to check. So. It has been pretty good on those settings, but with those settings causes more battery life drain, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So be aware of that. Going further, dot size. All right, dot size is 3.5 on this thing. Um, I have the Acro P1, and 
the 3.5 or 3.5 MOA dot is something that um, I was kind of like, eh, about because I like my dots to be a little bit smaller and I'll, I'll make a specific uh, video about why I do. But one of the things that I realized with the dot size is that it is a crisp dot. So for me, astigmatism wise, it is not too bad. De but depending on your eyes, you may see a little bit more on the, the weird side when it comes to dots, depending on your astigmatism and the deformation of your eye. So up to you and, and I suggest looking through one and you're always welcome to, if you come to a class and I'm using it or I brought it, you're welcome to use it. I, I don't mind lending my gun out, letting guys get some time on it, whether it's the agency arms gun, the triggers, or if you just wanna work on one of these optics that are different. The other thing is, um, because I prefer smaller dot sizes, it does look different than my normal dots on my other guns. So it is something to get used to and it is something to play around with, but really not that big of a deal and it's definitely usable and i understand why they went to a 3.5 versus going six and versus going one because it kind of meets in the middle and most guys that are either on one end or the other will accept it like we have so something to think about there hopefully they'll come out with a one moa adjustments so the adjustments on this gun are a normal spot right windage elevation so the, the good part about them is that they're set in, right? So they can't be bumped. The bad part about them and something that bothered me is there's no audible clicks or feel to them. Um, so there's, there's no actual tactile or audible clicks to the adjustments. They have fixed that. Mine is just an older one. See when I got it, right? Like it just didn't have that, that ability yet. So I think you could probably send your old ones in or you could probably do something or call them and ask them, but I haven't done that because I wanted to see how it would last the way it is. It was annoying because I'm not getting good clicks that I can make proper adjustments based off of. I just had to guesstimate by how far I was smoothing it over because it just wouldn't, it wouldn't click for me. So I couldn't like write down or get a good adjustment um, to it. So it's kind of annoying to zero, but it is what it is. The other thing is the Torx adjustment, uh, or you have to use a Torx uh, adjustment tool, which Aimpoint comes with, so it's not a big deal, or they, they send it with it. But um, you could also use a small screwdriver, a really small one. That annoys me, right? I'd like to be able to do it in the field with a small like edge of my knife or edge of my, my tool or a piece of brass or the back of, of a casing, something like that that I could use to adjust these just like I do on my RMRs. I prefer it to be simple like that. Um, reason why, mainly on a, on a training perspective or an instructor perspective, that means that I have to have this tool with me just in case somebody shows up with an acro and they don't have their tool. Not a big deal, but it is something to think about. Um, the good part is multitasker sends their own torques are in there. Those little multitasker twists, it work in there too. So that's kind of nice, but um, I would have rathered a flathead, just something flat, easy. Um, going through their battery life, all right? Something you guys are probably waiting for because that's kind of what this thing is mostly known for is its lack of battery life. Um, so on the setting seven or eight, the ones that I use the majority of the time with this thing or that I carry it with, uh, I've seen about 25 days worth of battery at the max using the, uh, the Retina or Retina brand uh, batteries that you can find on Big Tech's outdoors. The, that's not so bad, but it is if you always have it on like that because some guys are just used to and are spoiled by a year's worth, a five years worth, a three years worth batteries. And this really kind of put everybody down. It, it definitely pushed the market away from it. And uh, I personally, only have one because of that battery life. I would prefer to have the year, two years, four years, five years, whatever that they can get out of it. But a year is kind of where the market is at. Um, it's not to be something that, that is minimized so far. Now they say you can get pretty, pretty long battery life on a lower setting. Problem is you can't see it on a lower setting. So I find that to be kind of like a, like a waste of them saying it. Uh, but one of the things that I have done um, is as, a, as an instructor, when I put this thing away and I put it back in its box or into my, my case, uh, I usually shut it off. 
right? So if I'm done with my training day and I go to put it away, I shut it off. And I can get three and a half months worth of a battery if I shut it off every time. Not so bad, so I change the battery about four times in a year. Um, I definitely changed it more this year because I wanted to keep it on and, and keep track of how long the setting 10 would last, setting nine, setting eight, seven, six, and then uh, and really find out what I could get out of the thing. But really, I was, I was definitely disappointed by it uh, battery-wise because I expected better. Out of aim point. Come on, guys. Um, but no big deal. It is something that you just have to deal with. But at the same time, like I change the batteries on my night vision pretty often, right? It only lasts about 25 hours, if that. Um, my LPVOs, same thing. I don't get as much battery life out of those things, so I have to change the battery on those often, right? If, if you use uh, any type of tool in this world, you have to change the batteries pretty often. No big deal. So really, it's not that big of a deal. Also, I've noticed that my zero doesn't change based off of battery changes. So every time I've changed the battery and I've gone to re-zero or check my zero or reconfirm it, it has been spot on and I'm pretty happy with that. So that means I can change this battery all I want and still retain my zero, at least on my sample size that's ha that has happened. So not sure if that happened for everybody, not sure if that's a design uh, feature, but it is something that's on there and it's not that bad. So if you're willing to change batteries pretty often or you're willing to uh, set an alarm on your phone or calendar date that you change it every 15 to 20 days or something and just be safe, you can really work with this optic and make it a usable carry optic, whether for duty or for concealed carry. You'll just go through more batteries. No big deal. Um, so my overall thoughts. My overall thoughts is I like the optic. <laughs> I really do. I like the way it, you, it's functionally used. It, it works the way that it does a lot of the things, just the adjustments on it, the adjustment style and the adjustment tool used and the battery life are the only thing that bother me about it. And even those are kind of like, eh, I'm just being nitpicky, really. But uh, hopefully in the next iterations of this thing, it'll um, get better. And maybe they'll up that battery life. Maybe they'll fix what's going on with it. Maybe they'll take advice or, or at least um, considerations based off of what people like myself and Aaron Cowan and some of the other professionals out there and even the users that are using it all the time will say. Uh, but we'll see. I guess we'll see. Um, but overall, I really do like the optic. It's been fantastic. And as long as I change the batteries, I'm, uh, I'm a happy camper. So hope this helps you guys with, with understanding a little bit more about the Acro and also maybe a little bit on what my thoughts are on the Acro. And it may help you choose whether you should or shouldn't get one. But um, to me, it's a great optic. So it's up to you and what your conditions are and what you're going to use it for. But being a closed emitter optic that does a really good job and is really durable uh, so far, I'm very happy with it. So, hope that helps, guys. Take care. Tonight my team is home, out to play. All my anger goes away.